I was talking about a meeting like this that we were in and, and the Holy Spirit took over. And then I saw myself and this life had ended for me. I was no longer in this world. I was in the other one, the next world. Yes. And I saw that we were saints with white and a pool, a sea of heads, an endless sea of heads. And we were rejoicing. We were rejoicing. We were rejoicing. You know, it was like homecoming. You could see people you read about. John Knox. Then, meanwhile, that place was white with light. It was glistering with glory. Then they said Jesus was coming to that place. So we all laid on the ground. And the one light that made the light that was previously there look like darkness now began to shine and reach. So we could not even lift our head because you will go blind. Jesus passed and I he, he, I was lying here. He now came. I saw his feet. And he touched me. He said, stand up. When I stood up, I saw, I saw some men and women I've been reading about. I never saw any of them in, in life. Few of them. He said, go and stand here. It was a sea of heads. So what I understood, the angel that was giving me insight about what happened, told me that if I'm faithful, even in glory, that's when I will see my true rank. I repented. As, as the praise and worship was going on, I started repenting first. Started fresh repentance. Eh? So you have this glorious plan for me. Jesus Christ. I ch checked my life. I said, checked the way I was relating with my wife. Whether I was a wicked man or... <laughs> Do you know that vision is before my eyes every day? Yes. When there is trouble, before I respond, I will check. Will he be pleased? Even when I finish preaching today, I will go back to him in the night and kneel down by my bedside and ask, how did I? I'm walking towards that glory that I saw. I saw something. The Bible says concerning Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, he, 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 he regulated the present. He gave him the impetus to survive on natural things. What have you seen? Because the Bible says that the Spirit searches all things. What have you seen? If you have seen nothing from Him, you will not put yourself under pressure to become anything. My first trip to heaven was at the age of 13. It was the, the angel that I normally see with a very slim face that carries a scroll that told me what happened. He said, do you know that you were supposed to die at 13? That this was supposed to be your death. Meanwhile, my mom is a nurse. I've been struggling. I had high fever. I didn't make it. And I was in heaven for eight hours. And I can tell you that I know it is eight hours because a clock was on my head like this while I was lying down on that sick bed. All right? So I know when I woke up, when I came back, I was there for eight hours. So these four angels were sent to fight for your soul so that your soul will come. Because you have not fulfilled your assignment. That was when I was told I was a preacher. I was 13 years old. And before I came back into my body, Jesus said, if you commit immorality, your life on earth will end. So, there was no rope, no, no allowance for immorality in the agreement. That was how I married a virgin. Because no matter what you do, I will remember that place. Yes. It's only my wife I want it today. <laughs> I, I love her. Hey. Are you must have to. Yeah. 
Your life will become weak without weight when you have seen nothing. For the Spirit searches all things. It is the things that you have seen that you can lay hold on. It is the eyes He gives you to see through that you can behold your portion in the vast base of His enterprise. What seers power? Anytime God wanted to train prophets those days, He trained them in sight and said, What do you see? What do you see? If you see nothing, nothing will happen. This is one area where you can we can have no counterfeit. If you have seen nothing, you will be nothing. Every follower of Jesus must be stirred in the spirit to see beyond the natural. That becomes your driving force. It becomes the reason why you are not depressed when others are already lost. What sees thou? It becomes an anchor for your soul. It keeps you on your toes. A thousand may fall by your right hand side. Ten thousand by the other side. But you are still in check. The reason is because you saw something. This is beyond the library. It's beyond the lecture. This is spiritual sight. And, it, and how it provides an anchor for the soul. In Nigeria, a high politician's wife sent me a message that God has approved me to be sleeping with her. No, no, don't cry, don't cry. Just listen to listen to my story. Just with gravity, with gravity in your soul. If you are excited, eh, you will lose the reason for which I risk to tell you this testimony. You know the reason. This, that woman is one of the most beautiful Nigerians alive now. The reason why it was, it was not a deal was because, you know, they told me. When, <laughs> there was no deal. I was told from there. Not by an angel. Oh, Jesus told me himself. Young man. If you find yourself in immorality, you will come back. So I, I couldn't yield. Because the things that Jesus revealed to me, they were more brilliant in my eyes than that offer. I noticed that every stage of my life, I will have that offer. You see, Jesus warned me before time because he knows that my life is rigged with temptations after that order. What have you found? If you have not found anything, you will become nothing. You will possess nothing. You will just be going through the motions. Yes, I have uh, an MBBS degree. I'm doing public health. Matters. There are so many people like that. <laughs> there are so, so many people. But if you find what is written, what is a mystery, what has been held as a mystery that princes do not know, if you find that thing, you will stand out. Nothing will take it away from you. They can take away the coat of many colors that you carry. But there is something that Satan can never take away. Oh my God. I don't know how to say it stronger. There is something he can never take away. Where you are seated there, we are going to pray a prayer as I try to round up. So that we can do maybe a uh, 10 minutes practicals. You know, the kingdom of God is not in words. It's not in words. You know, I used to be a teacher those days. And if you want to teach biology, there are several things you cannot teach adequately except you illustrate it by the aid, with the aid of a diagram. The, the things of the kingdom of God are such that uh, it is only power that can illustrate it. The utensil that is used to illustrate kingdom things. It's called power. So when we finish the theoretical aspect, we need to do practicals so that the Spirit of God can preach by himself. 
many times that makes a stronger impact on your heart than the rhetoric of a preacher. More and more, the Lord is coming to the stage these days because there is something glorious he wants to restore. And we are privileged that he chose this time because it is obvious it will happen in our lifetime. There is a secret that was hidden for your advantage. And when you find it, you will stand out. Doesn't matter the name of your family. Doesn't matter the country of your origin. It doesn't matter how you are regarded in society. We came from the wilderness, from the desert. But when we found this treasure, he took us, he's taken us to the ends of the earth. God has spoken a word over your life for which you will need to labor to uncover. And when you see it, when you see it, every other thing that is contesting for that place in your heart will fall like a pack of cards.